Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Turtle Biscuit. This is a bit of a port report for Far Cry 4. This is based on the 1.2 launch patch and the NVIDIA drivers that were also put out at the launch of the game. So we're going to be talking a little bit about performance options and all that kind of thing. Full WTFs of this game will be coming later. I haven't played enough of it to give you my proper assessment. So welcome to Karat. It's really kind of pretty, as you can probably see right here. So let's talk a little bit about the options menu before we show you too much of the performance here. This will be recorded at 60, although you may notice some drops below 60. And there are reasons for that. Although what those reasons are, I couldn't exactly tell you. So, let's have a look at the options menu before we begin. Support report. You expect this, I hope. If you don't, you're watching the wrong video. To general, what do we see? Well, we've got subtitle options, which is always nice. But the audio options are leaving something to be desired. Master volume and music on or off is not a good set of audio options. You need separate sliders for different types of audio, like voice, sound effects, gun effects, ambience. You should be able to customize all of these things individually. You can't do that. Pretty damn annoying. Minor point as well, it does not let you change the audio output device in the game. Not many games allow you to do that, but again, it's a nice feature that I like to mention every once in a while for those of us that happen to have multiple audio devices. So there you go. Outside of that, game difficulty settings, which go easy, normal, and hard. And then you've got weapon tagging on or off. Which is a little strange, because this, at least to me, seems like it would be an option that should be in this menu. Not sure why it's in general. <clears throat> a little bit weird. So here, you can basically customize your difficulty by tweaking a huge amount of things regarding the hood. You don't want the reticle there, it's gone. Don't want detection meter there, no problem. Ammo indicator, you can turn that off as well. Crouch indicator, things like guide updates, tutorial updates, all of these can be turned off. You can even change the minimap opacity, which is a nice little feature to have. And not a huge number of games actually have that, which is good. So this is all really, really nice. I like this level of customization. Nothing to complain about there. Gamepad. Of course, you can't rebind the buttons, but you can customize them to some degree. You can shoulder swap, for instance. Swap what the shoulder buttons do. You can swap between lefty and righty shoulder, lefty and righty stick, and you can change driving controls between classic and default. You can also go between PlayStation 4 and Xbox controller, which is a nice little option to have. Most games don't actually have that. They assume you're using an Xbox controller, which these days is not necessarily true. So it's good to see that changed. Keyboard and mouse controls. Okay, so there's mouse acceleration problems. You might be thinking, well, how can that be? They've got a mouse acceleration option that you can just turn off. That is not enough. It leaves it on anyway. You might remember that Far Cry 3 had a negative mouse acceleration issues that could only be turned off by extracting an XML file and editing some of the files there. This game has a similar problem, although you don't have to use mod tools to change it. If you go to gamerprofile.xml in the My Games folder, you find Far Cry 4 and you change all of the mentions of smoothing to zero from one, this should resolve most... Not all, but most of the mouse acceleration issues. By default, the aiming is a pain in the ass. frankly. It makes the mouse feel very unresponsive. It's almost like it's doing what, in fact it is, doing what you're not asking it to do. So that's a problem. Don't know why that's an issue when they have all of this in here. This clearly does not work and needs to be fixed. But thankfully, with a little XML editing, you can fix it. Outside of that, you've got rebindable keys. There are some buttons, quite a few in fact, that are bound to different functions simultaneously, which is a little bit annoying. Interact is probably the biggest offender here. I found that there was a problem if you had your vehicle damaged. You could, at least it said on the screen, hold the interact button to get out your repair tool and start to repair. Unfortunately, this only works on a kind of tiny little space on the vehicle, and it's very easy to instead get into the vehicle rather than repair it. Now the game does have a repair tool button. It's Y. Why it's why, couldn't say. But the game never tells you this, so for the first couple of hours when I damaged my vehicle, I was wondering why is this so goddamn fiddly? Just use the Y button. Now by default, next weapon is not in fact bound to the mouse wheel. I would suggest that you do that. Personal preference, of course, but by default, they bound cycle, throwable, and zoom to the mouse wheel. Why is zoom and cycle throwable on the same button. I want zoom to be on the mouse wheel, but I don't want cycle throwable to be on the mouse wheel. I want to be able to change my weapons using the mouse wheel. That makes perfect sense. This weapon wheel nonsense is console bollocks, and frankly, it's annoying. So I tend to avoid it whenever possible. But of course, you've got to go in there anyway to switch out weapons, because it's got the good old four weapon slot things, and you only start off with one weapon slot. So you're going to be quite limited as to the weapons that you can carry around initially until you start unlocking the various holsters. Although, the first holster for it, which was quite surprising to me, was for a sidearm only. So if you want two primaries, you're going to have to wait until you've got the right sort of stuff. I find that bothersome. Let me put it that way. All right. 
Outside of that, though, the key rebinding is, for the most part, fine. But this, you know, this whole thing is, is silly. I don't know why Zoom and Cycle Throwable would possibly be on the same binding. There's no reason for that. It's stupid. All right. Let's have a look at video options. Lots of them. Refresh rate goes up very high. Good luck ever getting to this. <laughs> you would need a monster rig. And frankly, I don't even think the monster rig exists that would allow this to happen. Quad SLI 980s, maybe? Maybe? But it's hard to say. SLI doesn't scale that way sometimes. So maybe that's not going to help. Windowed mode, full screen, windowed, and borderless. All available. Always nice to see. V-Sync off, of course. Aspect ratio can also be customized here as well if you wish to access the various different resolutions. It does go up to 4K. In, on my monitor, of course, I've only got 2560 by 1440 only. But it, those options are there regardless. Would like to see a drop down instead of a toggle, frankly. Okay, quality settings. Well, you've got graphics quality, which has a bunch of presets. NVIDIA turns on all the NVIDIA specific stuff. So just bear that in mind. If we go to quality settings, then we're going to see all the customizable options. Motion blur, pff, off you go. Thank you very much. Texture quality. Turn it up as high as you can get it, because otherwise it looks terrible. In fact, in some areas it looks terrible anyway, but we are looking at an open world game. Most of the textures are actually okay. They're not mind-blowing, but they're all right. Occasionally you run into ones that are clearly much lower res than they should be. Shadow settings. Soft shadows for NVIDIA available here. Post effects. Don't even know what this means. Would like to know what post effects actually means. Does this have anything to do, to do with anastrophic filtering? I don't like it when they bundle in a bunch of post-processed effects into one thing and don't tell you what they are. It's nice to be able to customize specific post-processed effects that I might not want on, but I can't do that here. Geometry. This actually has a fairly significant impact on the frame rate, so this might be the first thing you look into if you have frame problems, because you're adjusting the graphical complexity of the world geometry, and it's an open world and there's a lot of that, so this can have a significant impact on your frame rate. Vegetation. This can also have a decent impact on your frame rate. Terrain, not so much. Water. It, it claims this is ultra. I gotta say, I'm not f impressed by the water effects in this game at all. They, they look several years out of date. I've seen some amazing water effects over the past couple of years, and this game is not one of those that has that. Environment detail, that's again a very generic setting. Then you got things like ambient occlusion, HBAO+, SSBC, SSAO available. HBAO+, I just leave on because that seems to work pretty well. Anti-aliasing, SMAA, TXAA, and MSAA. So frame rate impact, TXAA4 tanks my frame rate. TXAA2 does not. SMAA tanks my frame rate. Lower MSAAs, not so much. MSAA8, significant frame rate impact. Worth bearing all of these things in mind. So I keep it on TXAA2. God rays, enhanced volumetric fog or off. Fur, yeah. There's some kind of fur technology here. It looks a little bit weird. I'll try and kill an animal to show you what that looks like. And then trees relief. Couldn't even tell you what that does. Something to do with the trees. So these are the settings that I found that keep the frame rate above 60. If I go to TXAA4, I will notice that things are going to drop down. So just bear that in mind. That seems to be the main perpetrator of frame drop and, of course, to a lesser degree, degree geometry. So if you're, looking, if you're looking at consistently lower frame rates, AA is probably your first port of call here. I'm running this, of course, on SLI 980s. Before the patch, I was running on a single 980, and I couldn't have AA on, and it would still drop below 60 on a fairly regular basis on Ultra. I had to tweak some more of these settings. Since the driver update, it helps, except within the town, where I noticed there's big frame rate drops. In the open world, generally not so much of a big deal. All right, cool, there you go. So there's all of your options information, with the exception, of course, of one little detail that you may wish to look at, which is... Field of view. They did add this. Some people played the pirated version before it came out and noted there was no field of view option. And if they tried to change it in the XML files, what happened was that the game went crazy. And if you got on a vehicle, you suddenly went to plaid. Don't know why that is, but this it does have field of view scaling. I don't know what this means because it doesn't tell you. So uh, this could be 150. This could be 65. I have no idea. Please, 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 developers. Put a label on it. It's not that hard. Tell me, is that 90 horizontal? Is that vertical? Is that 110? Is that 55? I don't even know. You didn't say. So there you go. All right, let's resume this damn thing. So right now, performance is pretty damn good. In this area, ca currently capturing with NVIDIA Shadow Play, which has like a one or two frames per second impact. I'm at 100 FPS. No problem at all. Everything's lovely. Turn around here, there's definitely a drop. Looking towards the town always seems to drop the frame rate quite heavily for some reason. But outside in the regular world, frame rate is not too shabby. On this 
particular system. Bloody well hope not! <laughs> Good lord. There's a lot of power involved in this, but I mean... It's got some very beautiful looking mountains, I'll give it that. And some very nice looking lighting effects indeed. Good looking foliage too. Let's uh, go have a look at some trees. There we go. I'm gonna get off our bike for a second. We'll have a look at some bushes and foliage and things like that. They're not too shabby. Frankly, they look pretty good. Look up at the trees, you'll see the light shafts and the shadows being cast through them. I'm not the sort of person that could really give you information on how accurate these shadows are. This is the sort of thing that you need to ask a graphics expert, but I like the look of it. I like the, the way that the light shines through the canopy in a very dynamic manner as the leaves shift. It looks reasonably realistic. Tree texture's not so brilliant, but hardly that important. Alright, let's get back on the vehicle, because I'm about to show you what I think is the biggest problem this game currently has in performance. Yes, it has a lot of options, but... What's going to happen here is I'm going to drive forward and I'm suddenly going to run into hitching problems. The frame rate's suddenly going to drop for about a second. Why? Couldn't say. No idea. But it happens. Happens there again. You may even notice it in the video. It's noticeable for me. It may even be noticeable for you. That just dropped below 60. Now spiked back up to 90. Again, dropped to 60. Spiked to 90. 95% 90 of the time, this thing's running at about 90 frames per second. Right then, it went to 55. It's very, very noticeable. Why is this happening? That's a great question. This kind of frame rate hitching is hugely annoying in a game where you have to travel fairly quickly from place to place. It happens while you're flying on a hang glider. It even happens... Oh, hello, hello. Okay, wolves. Go away. Thank you very much. Behold the fur textures, by the way. I can't... I'm not entirely certain about that. But there you go. So this is the biggest performance problem this game currently has. Huge issue. You're traveling fast, your frame rate's gonna hitch over and over and over and over and over again. It consistently happens. It even just happened there as I was moving fairly normally and just sprinting around the place. It's ludicrous, frankly. Absolutely ludicrous. And it's gotta be fixed. How do we fix it? Well, I just don't know because I don't know what's causing it. Now, NVIDIA recommends that you run this game on an SSD. Well, I run all my games on an SSD. If it's actually loading and caching textures from an SSD, it's not doing a particularly good job of it. If it's loading assets in like that and causing these big frame rate hitches on a regular basis, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, ca I can't believe that it could possibly be an issue with an SSD. Now, what I did was I had a look at my CPU load. I also had a look at my memory controller load and the amount of memory used. I'm not using my maximum VRAM, so it doesn't appear to be that. I have four gigs of VRAM on each of these cards, although, you know, it doesn't combine them. That's not how SLI works. But what I did do is I had a look at my CPU, and what I was noticing is that the third core is maxing out constantly, and the rest of the cores, well, the load isn't really being balanced all that much. It's saying about 40% of my CPU is being used, and I can believe it, because while I get 100% CPU usage on core 3, all of my other cores, less so. So it may be a CPU multi-core issue. It may be a multi-threading issue. It's hard to say. Is, that, is there something I was supposed to look for in here? I'm not entirely certain. I'll have a quick look. Maybe, just maybe. So that's not brilliant. Not particularly happy with that. And in fact, it is the biggest performance problem that I currently have with this. This is certainly no Assassin's Creed Unity. It runs a boatload better. No doubt about that. But it's that hitching that's going to cause people a lot of problems. And there are plenty of people reporting it as an issue. Unfortunately. Now, what we have, of course, here are some just absolutely wonderful, wonderful vistas to look at. But simultaneously, as you're driving through them, you're probably going to note more of the frame rate stuttering than you are of the actual beauty of the landscape. It's very, very noticeable. It's impossible not to notice. Even on a G-Sync display, which is supposed to kind of minimize that because it syncs the display to the frame rate at the time. So you don't get the kind of tearing that makes it very noticeable. These drops in frame rate are hugely, hugely noticeable. They gotta be fixed. They have got to be resolved in some way. Hopefully this game will be patched more to resolve that. Outside of that, the game looks pretty damn gorgeous in most places. There are some exceptions. There are some really gnarly textures in places, particularly on cliff faces. More often than not, what you'll find is that the texture quality actually varies from parts to part of the rock. And this doesn't look particularly good, obviously, if we get off here. But we are looking at an open world game. And I do, of course, have some degree of tolerance for poor quality textures in big open world games. 
the main problem that I have at the moment is that the game involves quite a lot of climbing up cliff faces. So while I like to rub my face against walls and lick walls and find out what the texture quality looks like, this game actually forces you to do that because you're going to be using your grapnel to do a lot of climbing. And every now and again, you'll run into just this horrific texture that isn't even close to the resolution of the rest of the textures around it. I don't know why that is. Is it an error in loading the texture in? Or is it genuinely just lower resolution than the rest of it for God knows what reason? Hard to say. It's not brilliant, frankly. So I'm not hugely impressed with the terrain textures. Thankfully, a lot of the terrain is grass, which looks very good. There's a lot of foliage covering a lot of this stuff up. The game does a good job of obfuscating a great degree of this stuff. Pop in. There is some. Definitely not as bad, I think, as Assassin's Creed Unity, but it definitely exists. Trees pop in. There are, of course, variable details on distance. I think, again, the game does a better job of obfuscating it. I think the way that the, the terrain is designed is a lot more helpful. But even driving up there, you'll, you'll kind of very clearly notice that detail pops in over time. I probably don't want to be going off this cliff. That seems like a, a fairly poor idea, all things considered. Most games have this. It really comes down to how well the games manage to hide it. Far Cry, for the most part, does it reasonably well. For the most part. Every now and again, though, and bearing in mind I'm always looking for this stuff, you'll see, well, damn, hang on a minute. I'm pretty sure that tree wasn't there earlier, and now it is. Thankfully, there are so many trees that it's really hard to, well, see the trees for the wood, I suppose. It's a sneaky little technique. It works pretty well. I'll give him kudos for making that happen. Outside of that, the game's got some excellent facial animations. It's got some really, really good character models. Very, very happy with how those look. Particularly in the cutscenes, you will notice some really, really nice detail on the faces, some great mocap work, and overall some really good lip sync, which is nice to see. All these cutscenes, most of them anyway, not all of them, but most of them are rendered in real time. Speaking of the cutscenes, none of them are skippable, which I'm not particularly happy with. Not really sure what's going on with that. The, In fact, the start of the game has a... Here's a big example, by the way, of gnarly texture work. You see, like, the difference in quality of the texture here with this texture? Not particularly great looking. Anyway, besides that, the cutscenes are not skippable, which is just kind of ridiculous, frankly. I'm really surprised that that is the case. Damn it, I can't zoom in now because I rebound my damn key. Zoom key, not bound anymore. Lovely. Can't do it with the mouse wheel. So stupid. Ugh. The game starts with about 10 minutes of cutscenes, which is not particularly fun. Do make sure, by the way, if you're going to restart your game, that you get to the... I think get to the first village, because otherwise... it do I don't think it saves the checkpoint. I had to go through the thing again, which was just infuriating. Not particularly happy about that. Just would be nice to be able to skip cutscenes. I mean, is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. We must experience their artistic vision! And so on and so forth. Yeah, okay, alright, alright, we get the bloody idea. Let me skip your dialogue sometimes. Yes, I want to hear what the main antagonist has to say because I find his writing really interesting. I'm not so concerned about the other characters. It's like, yes, I can go rescue the hostages. I don't need to be lectured about three for three minutes about how important that is. I understand that inherently. So that's not really a huge deal. Let's find the other ones. Go with a little bit of stabby stabby on him. There we go. Such a lunge range on the takedowns in this game. Kind of crazy. But overall, I would say that performance is, for the most part, pretty good. And you should be able to customize this game to get good performance out of it, regardless of what you do. It's probably going to involve knocking down AA from time to time. It may involve messing with the settings, but thankfully there are a lot of those. I have not run into a situation where I feel that, regardless of my setup, I'm not going to be able to get good performance in some way. I don't know what it is, what's up with TXAA not giving good performance, but at the moment, with TXAA down to 2 rather than 4, this game is running pretty well. There's also some nice impressive effects. You know, I'm, I'm quite impressed with how the cloth waves in the wind. It's a nice looking effect there, and the real-time shadows also look particularly good. So, again, that is something that I will very much give them credit for. Absolutely. I'm going to switch out to the bow and see if we can do a little bit more silent combat, perhaps. <laughs> well, that was a lovely piece of loot, wasn't it? Apparently, that's very valuable in Karat. But it's still got some really nice stuff. I love the murals in particular and the artwork that they put in this game. It's very, very colorful for the most part. But I'll talk more about that in my full video. So conclusion for the port, for the most part, it's not too shabby. Please do, for the love of God, update to the latest drivers. Because if you do not, 
you're gonna be having some fairly serious problems. We lost the hostage. That's unfortunate. On the old drivers, this game is gonna run absolutely terribly. On the new drivers, much, much better. Just bear in mind, you're gonna have to do some tweaking, and in order to play on Ultra, the performance requirements are relatively high. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Shoot me in the mouth. <laughs> my name's been Total Biscuit. A little bit of a port report for Far Cry 4. Do bear in mind, of course, that my experiences are my own on my computer, and they're not necessarily representative of the experiences that you will get. Your mileage may vary. I'll see you next time.